Hello. Today I would like to introduce you to a new way of thinking the economy. A new way to make business. You have certainly heard of open source and associated to free software. But open source is not software. Open source is a legal construction that changes a way to invent and build things and eventually a way to do business. So welcome to a new paradigm. We're open for business. Why did Tesla Motors open up the company's patents to any automaker willing to build electric cars? Why did Toyota open up its hydrogen patents to everybody in 2015? Why does Google freely distribute Android to all smartphone makers? Why did GlaxoSmithKline and Novartis submit for public usage more than 300,000 leads of chemical structures for new malaria drugs? Have they all gone crazy? Let's talk some more about intellectual property. Basically, there are three topics in intellectual property. One, copyrights, two, patents, and three, trademarks. Let's have a detailed look. First of all, copyrights. Copyrights are exclusive rights for a creator to use and distribute his or her original work. They apply to works like texts, designs, drawings, pictures, audio, music, video, etc. Copyrights protect the expression of an idea, but not the idea itself. Second, patents. Patents are exclusive rights granted by a state to an inventor for a limited period of time. The legislature's idea is to exchange a protection against a detailed public disclosure of the invention. Patents protect the idea and therefore are very difficult to create and often subject to controversy. Think about it. What can differentiate one idea from another? And third, trademarks. Trademarks are exclusive rights on a recognizable sign, design or expression related to an organization or a product. For example, General Motors, Coca-Cola, Android and the Little Robot, Toyota. The R sign is for an officially registered mark, as the TM is for a non-registered mark or not yet registered mark. And now let's talk about something else. We had our legal course. Now let's continue with some simple math. Three children are playing with a construction game. In order to build a small house, they each require 100 bricks and one hour of work. They end up with three little houses, totalizing 300 bricks and three hours of work. Let's now suppose the three children unite their assets, the bricks, and their work time. With 300 bricks and 3 man-hours, they can also build a big house within the same hour. The result is more impressive, but may also create new problems. Whose house is it? What if they disagree on modifications? What if they prefer to play alone? These problems are linked to the type of asset. They appear only in case of tangible assets. And what if 
this house was a non-tangible asset, like, for example, a text, a picture, an engineering drawing, a design, or a computer program. A non-tangible asset can be copied at will. All three children can now benefit of a big house without the problems linked to it. All previous issues are now solved. The three children are all three full owners of the project. They can disagree any time and create their own modifications. They can any time quit the team and continue their own version of the project. In summary, a community's common interest is mathematically increased when building around freely shared knowledge. And there is a very obvious example for this. The law. Think about it. No one ever copyrighted or patented a law. And nobody ever thought of it. Because a law is, and will ever be, a freely shared knowledge. But does this affect lawyers' incomes? Are lawyers deemed poor and destitute? This is obviously not the case. But why? If freely shared knowledge obviously works for law, why not extend it to other fields? So, what if I shared my knowledge for free? Free usage, free distribution, free further study, free modifications. Oh, no, 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 no. If I share my knowledge, I lose all protection and others will steal it. I want my rights. Let's summarize. The community's interest is to build around freely shared work. No one will give away his work for free without rights. So, how can we combine these two contradictory statements? The solution consists in a subtle use of existing laws. We'll proceed in three steps. One, we'll enforce our exclusive rights on our work. Two, we'll agree on some freedoms. Three, we'll lock the user into our conditions, making it as difficult as possible to steal the work. Okay, let's go into details. One, we use the existing copyright laws to enforce our rights. Copyright laws automatically restrict all usage of my work to anyone in more than 200 countries until 50 years after my death. Copyright is an exclusive right. Therefore, I can freely decide to sell or rent my work, ask for royalties, sell subscriptions, give it away, exchange it, share it, or whatever goes through my imagination. Therefore, I can also subject it to any freedoms and or conditions. Second, we'll set freedoms. In order to create a creative dynamic, I want to authorize everything that will favor further development of the project. I mean by that, free usage, free distribution, free study, free modifications. Anyone can use, distribute, study and modify my work as much as he wants. And third, I lock the user into my conditions. I agree he's using my work, but I don't want him to run away with it. Therefore, I'll create conditions. Number one, the obligation to inherit the same license to all modifications and additions. 
every work he's doing based on my work should have the same license, including all freedoms and conditions. Number two, the obligation to keep intact all references, copyrights and trademarks. Every version of his work should have my name mentioned on it. Number three, the obligation to share all modifications and additions with the authors. I want to know and be able to use any modification brought to my work. And four, the irrevocable acceptance of all above terms and conditions. Understand it. Like a virus, these conditions will contaminate all work done based on my original contribution. Therefore, all future work will be trapped in the same legal construction. In opposition with the copyright, the additional freedoms and conditions are commonly called the copyleft. It is also represented by an inverted copyright sign. There are numerous licenses available and all are based on a similar legal mechanism based on copyright, with added freedoms and conditions. As examples, there is the GPL, the BSD, the MIT license for software, Creative Commons for text, pictures, video, documents, CERN Open Hardware License or TAPR for hardware. Understand it well. To protect a work, I do not have to register or do anything else than mentioning the type of license. All these licenses are published on the internet, so a copyright sign and a simple reference to the license webpage is just enough. Let's now look at an example. A research laboratory discovers a new formula. It is a really interesting lead to solve a big problem, but it still needs a lot of adjustments before market distribution. The laboratory has now to make a choice. Either they try to find investors in order to bring the cash in the project and later file a patent. This will take a long time, administration and the inventor will most probably lose its ownership in favor of the investor. The other solution is to go open source. No investment needed, no time to wait, no lawyers. The laboratory chooses the open source solution and submits its idea to an open to public pharma chemical repository on the internet. This is the first brick of the project, the original idea. This can be done via a website repository, a scientific review, a university or directly with other laboratories. People in the industry, wherever in the world, hear about it and get interested. A larger laboratory with production capabilities sees a business opportunity in this formula. Though the project lacks of production methodologies. The larger laboratory develops a production method and locked by the license is forced to publish it back in the same repository. This is a second break to the project. To reach some requirements, the large laboratory still requires adjustments. All in all, the small laboratory has the most knowledgeable people for this job. The large laboratory hires the small laboratory, a third brick in the construction. The project now reaches a stage where industry gets interested. For mass production, the industry still needs some research and they are ready to invest in it. Rather than paying their own researchers who are not aware of this particular product, they ask the specialists to do it, both laboratories. Finally, 
the product is ready to go on the market. The industry puts it on the market and slowly returns on its investments. After some time, the product proves successful and attracts competitors. An important industry decides to enter the market. These newcomers still need the know-how. They invest in the industry experts, the two laboratories, in order to develop their own industrial production method. Competition takes now place on the market. Industries compete on packaging, positioning, quality, distribution network, advertising, etc. But whatever concerns the core product, it stays a common good, in which everybody has an interest to make it as performant as possible. Let's now have a look at the different benefits. Let's start with small enterprises. What does open approach give for benefit against traditional approach? Free promotion against need for marketing. Free protection against need for patents. Research and development leverage against need for costly research and development. Fast start against waiting for financing. All in all, open approach makes it possible today, as traditional approach makes it almost impossible. And now, what are the benefits for medium enterprises? Open approach allows free promotion against need for marketing, free protection against need for patents, free access to new leads against acquiring patents, affordable research and development against very costly one, fast pace against slow motion. All in all, open approach is easy and affordable against a traditional approach that is hard and expensive. But does it also benefit large organizations? The open approach allows them fast moves in the market against slow market adjustments. It also allows trendy innovations against lack of innovation. And finally, delocalized R&D against costly R&D investments. All in all, open approach is fast and flexible against a slow and rigid traditional approach. And what about the benefits for the competition? Open approach offers global research and development savings as traditional approach only research and development redundancy. Open approach also offers implicit standardization as traditional approach lack of normalization. Also competitive innovation against product taken in hostage. All in all, open approach offers a healthy competition against a traditional approach with unhealthy competition. Patents are outdated, expensive, slow and offer small protection. Depending on the complication, an international patent can cost from $50,000 to $500,000 and can take from 3 to 5 years to be processed. The idea of the patent dates from the 19th century, a time when everything was national and information flowed slowly through paper publications. This concept has nothing to do with the globalized, fast-paced world of today. Your expertise is your asset. Ideas are free and sharing them will leverage unrivaled expertise. Scientists over the world know it well. There is no science without collaboration. Efficient progress can only be reached by sharing ideas. Speed is your key. Sharing will allow you to reach the market with the right idea within the right time. Sharing will speed up your development, enabling you to reach the market with the right product 
on the right time. Open business is not a better protection. It's just the best solution. Protected or not, if your idea is good, you will be copied. With open source, there are more chances that your copier will come back to you with a business proposal. And now, what about you? First of all, search the internet. Search open source and your industry name. For example, open source pharma, open source engineering, open source energy, open source education, and whatever could be your industry. Talk, understand, discover. Send an email to people with open experience within your industry. Exchange your views, concerns, experiences. People in open source are mostly willing to exchange ideas. Find opportunities. Find projects that could be interesting for your business. Don't you have a dream project you never managed to launch yet? Why not sharing it? Start sharing today. Change your approach. Open yourself to success. Thank you very much for your attention. By the way, this video is protected by Creative Commons and can be freely used and modified privately as well as professionally. But do not forget to mention my name. Thank you very much again. See you soon.